Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to new video. So, a little bit different car in this spot right now. If you guys watched my last video, you guys know that this is not mine. This is my good friend. He's actually lending this to me, his G80 M3, his Yare Edition M3, for the week to install some future classic spacers. Um, and he gave me the permission to daily drive it throughout the week, just have some fun. I do have some decent seat time in these cars already, thankfully, which I never thought I would be able to get to drive one, let alone have one in my garage for a you know extended period of time. Um, he actually was the one that had the Brooklyn Gray G80 M3. I did a review on it and everything. Uh, I also detailed it. So it's been on the channel for quite a few times, uh, but he actually ended up selling that one and he bought this one. I actually have a whole delivery video of this uh, back in October, I believe. It was obviously the Yara Edition Technoviolet and uh, he ended up keeping this one, which honestly is beautiful. If you guys can tell, it looks a little bit different. Not gloss paint. It's actually looks like a matte finish. Uh, and what is actually on here is S-Tech Stealth PPF. So the entire car is covered in PPF. Uh, all of the paint, all the techno violet is actually wrapped with Stealth PPF. So it gives it that matte finish. Really, really, really cool looking. Something that I would never consider ever. But now seeing this car in this, it's pretty amazing. And the great part about it is it protects the paint. So in the future, if he ever decides to you know, remove this and um, sell it or just wants a different look, you can always remove it and you'll have perfect paint underneath um, just like he got it brand new from the factory. So a couple things that differentiate between a Yare edition and a normal competition or normal M3 G80 is a few things. First and foremost, you actually get a carbon fiber front lip, which honestly makes a huge difference on this car. It is amazing what this little lip will do to the front end. It makes it look so much better. I know it's a very, very small detail, but it truly makes this front bumper actually look very, very good. I will show you guys out in the daylight, the front end and everything, you know, give a little bit more of a walk around. Uh, but that is something that you do get on the Yara edition. The wheels are very dirty, but they are gunmetal instead of the gloss black option or the silver option that you can get. The gunmetal when these things are clean are very, very, very nice. Obviously special to the Yara edition is the techno violet paint. I believe you can get them in a couple different colors, but the techno violet is personally my favorite and I'm glad they brought it back. It's from the E36 M3 and it is a beautiful color. One of my favorites. And uh, it's pretty cool that they brought this back for the 50th uh, anniversary of M car. And um, it's pretty cool that he got it on this. There's also a small plaque on the interior on the little uh, lid that says Yara edition 50th anniversary. Otherwise, nothing else is different. It's not any faster or anything like that. It's the exact same motor, same tune and all that uh, as a normal competition X drive. So nothing crazy, but those are the few things that you do get with the Yara edition. And um, you know, it's pretty cool if you really do like M cars and you want something special because this thing really is special with this paint. And uh, honestly, I just think it looks fantastic. So what we're actually going to be installing in this video is future classic spacers. So a lot of G80 guys, well actually M guys in general, BMW people um, use these spacers because they are fantastic. Once I open them up, you guys will see just how special these things are. Very, very high quality spacer, but there's a lot of details that go into it that makes it special and I will show you all that once we get into it. But as you guys can tell, the fitment on these wheels are pretty terrible. Uh, let's go to the rear because that is sitting pretty decent from factory. But as you can tell, the uh, back wheel is pretty sunken in and that is going to bump it out a decent amount, look way more aggressive. It's actually going to look a little bit lower since it's going to rid some of the shadows. So it's going to actually going to appear lower, even though it's not, and just going to look way more aggressive. Now the front is a totally different story. The ride height on this thing up front is massive. It looks like a four by four. Obviously it's for performance. You know, they don't go just for looks and there's a reason why it is up like that. Plus the wheel arches are different from the front to the rear. Like on most cars, it's cut a little bit differently from the front to the rear. So it's kind of an optical illusion. Uh, but either way, it is definitely really, really high up front. But just putting spacers on is going to make a big difference alone. It's going to bump it out, get rid of some of the shadow. So it's going to appear a little bit lower. Not much. It's not going to look like the rear, but it's going to help and uh, make it a little bit more aggressive overall. Um, and it's going to be a really, really cool install. I'm looking forward to it, but it's always fun to be working on something else, kind of mix it up a little bit. But uh, as for now, I'm actually going to call it a night. I'm going to be installing these tomorrow, uh, but I'm going to take you guys along for the day tomorrow, kind of, you know, show you some driving footage and everything. The car is fully broken in uh, so I can really get on it and enjoy it. 
And uh, this thing is plenty fast, uh, a little too fast if you ask me, has a lot of torque and um, it can get away from you pretty quickly, even with the all wheel drive system, but beautiful car, absolutely love it. Uh, so I will take you guys along for just a few driving clips and all that, and then we'll come back in the garage, install the spacers, and I'll give you guys a kind of before and after. So I will catch back up with you guys tomorrow morning. very fast. <laughs> Right, guys so like i said i figured i would get out of the car show you what it looks like it is extremely dirty it is pollen season here in new jersey so uh very very dirty i'm hoping i get a chance to actually clean it up for him before i return it just because uh it's kind of one of the things that i do when my friends lend me their cars i give them a good uh, hand wash in the garage and get it done for them but here's a little quick look at the spacers or the spacers aren't on but what the wheels look like without the spacers that's the front we go around to the rear this is uh, kind of what we're looking at. So it's definitely got to push it out quite a bit and it's going to look way more aggressive and uh, just look way better. It's amazing what spacers do for a car, even if it's the slightest amount. I remember I did three millimeter spacers on my STI just to kind of bump it out a little bit, get a little bit more aggressive fitment. And despite it being only three millimeters, it was a really big difference and it made such a better appearance overall. So this is going to be pretty cool with the 12s and 15s and I'm looking forward to installing it. But man, oh man, I wish this was clean. This thing looks amazing uh, with the Stealth PPF on here. So again, hopefully I can get a chance to clean it up for you guys and show you what it's all about. But, oh yeah, here's the front lip. I said I was gonna mention that as well. Bad lighting, so you can't really tell too much, but the front lip makes a massive difference on this front end, even though it's still got the large kidney grills and the little nostrils up front. Uh, the front lip still does make a big difference and I think it looks way better. Also, I noticed uh, the RA edition as well on the seats. You can only get it with black interior, which kind of stinks, but um, it comes with a little M stripe on the headrest on the front and rear, which is a cool little touch. And uh, I mean, oh, it's also got these the little uh, door sills. And also, I believe it comes with these exhaust tips, the titanium exhaust tips, not the full exhaust, just the tips, which look really, really nice. It's got carbon surround with the little M logo on it. So pretty darn cool. <laughs> yeah, my gosh, this is killing me how dirty it is, but still an amazing car. Absolutely a blast to drive. Car really encourages you to row through the gears. Even though this is the automatic transmission, it's still a lot of fun. The handling is pretty darn superb um, going through the turns and everything and going through twisties. It's pretty crazy how composed and flat this car is. 
but yeah, man, look at that stealth PPF. Looks amazing in the sun, even though it's dirty. All right, so I'll catch back up with you guys later tonight when we're in the garage installing the spacers. We'll go over a little bit more detail about them, but uh, I figured I would show you what the car looks like out in the sun, in the daylight, with the stealth BPF, and kind of do a little bit of a walk around. So I'll catch back up with you guys in a little bit. All right, guys, so it is obviously later in the day, nighttime, and we are going to get working on installing the spacers finally. Uh, so as I mentioned, they are future classic 15 millimeter and 12 millimeter. The 15s are going in the front since that is much more sunken in than the rears, and then the rears are getting the 12 millimeter. Now I'm gonna open them up, kinda of show you all the details on them. They're very, very nice. So very simple install. If you never installed spacers before, uh, it's literally just taking the wheel off, slapping on the spacer, and then putting the wheel back on. Uh, but with these Future Classic, there's actually a couple more steps that you need to do, and that's kind of what makes them so special and kind of why people prefer these spacers over anything else. Uh, so let's go ahead, let's unbox everything. I'll show you what you get, and then we can get to jacking up the M3 getting the spacers on and seeing what it looks like. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the 12 millimeter. Same thing as a 15, obviously just a different size, but this is the boxing, it slips right off. And then this is what is inside. So you get a little kind of instructions and kind of everything that is included, all the information, all the details for everything and um, stuff on the back as well. And then these are the actual spacers. So we'll pop them out of these little sleeves right here. Then underneath the spacers, you have the new extended lugs that you're going to be using since you cannot use the stock lugs since they're too short. Also, you get a little bit of anti-seize, which is really nice with a little paintbrush. And then also these, which is really cool. Now, one of the things about any spacer that you use other than Future Classic is you, basically you just put the spacer on the hub and it sits there and then gets sandwiched between the wheel and the hub. And that is that. With these, there's actually a locking Allen screw. So these actually screw into the hub through the spacer so it stays in one position. What that actually does is it eliminates any type of movement that may happen, which can translate into wheel shake, um, you know, if it's not centered on the bore right. So it is really nice that it comes with these, as well as the little thing of anti-seas as well. You don't need to use a lot of this. You only need to use it on the actual uh, hub on the actual car which connects right here, so it doesn't get seized to that. You can put some on the back too if you want a couple dabs, but um, I think they only recommend putting it on the actual hub of the car, and I'll show you just how to do that. But look how nice these things are. As you can see, there's a lot of pieces milled out for lightweight, and you know, it doesn't add much weight to the car, and these things are absolutely beautiful. I mean, the machine work on them and everything, you can see all the milling and all that, and uh, it's just a really, really nice spacer. I know it's kind of hard to believe that these may be nicer than anything else, but when you feel them, you can definitely tell. They also have little grooves in the back as well. So if they ever get seized to the actual hub, you can get some type of tool in there and pop it out. They're actually all around there. So it's not just in one spot and they have them labeled here. So that is the 12 millimeter. As you can see as well, these are hub centric. So the wheel is actually going to be sitting on here on the actual hub of the uh, car as well. So anytime you use a spacer that's, in my opinion, larger than five, get something that is a hub-centric spacer. Get something that actually has this lip so the wheel can sit properly on the hub because if you don't have this, the wheel's not gonna be able to really hang on to anything since there's not much left since the spacer pushes it out. So definitely a must if you're going with a decent sized spacer. So let's go ahead and throw the 12 millimeter on on the passenger rear. And then we'll go ahead and open up the 15 and do the passenger front. And then I'll knock out the other side off camera since it's exactly the same thing. And we have a little bit more room here to work and I can show you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rear on first, show you what that looks like, the whole process. We'll do the same thing in the front. And then um, I'll show you how everything looks. I'll do a little comparison from this side to that side so you can see just the difference. And then uh, I'll show you tomorrow in the daylight how everything looks once we get it all on and all that. Uh, but let's go ahead, let's start jacking up the car, getting the wheel loose, and getting the spacer on. Alright, so super easy. The bolts are actually pretty darn loose. Uh, I looked up the torque spec for these, and these are actually 101 foot-pounds, which is pretty excessive. Normally, I do about 90 pounds on all my cars, but I'm going to be following the OEM BMW specs for these wheels when I put them back on. Uh, but here are the hubs. This car has 2,000 miles on it, so the actual hub right here is completely perfect. 
Uh, but I'm still gonna go around. I have a wire brush that I'm just gonna put on my drill, kind of clean it up a little bit, clean it, I guess, a even a little bit more than it already is just to ensure a proper uh, connection. And for the actual anti-seize, you only put it on these little tabs right here. So this is actual the hub where the wheel sits. And then when you put the spacer on, um, it's actually gonna sit on the new hub of the spacer. But that is where they want you to put the actual anti-seize. I'll show you when I'm doing it, but I figured I'll mention that, get a little up close and personal. Uh, kind of hard to see, but you can see all the suspension and everything in there. Pretty cool. You can see all the EDC lines and all the fancy uh, technology going on in here. But all right. And also, we need to remove one of these. This is the uh, Allen key, the Allen screw that holds the spacer onto the actual hub that I was talking about. So this is the wire brush that I was talking about. It just connects to any drill. Pretty simple. I think I got this from AutoZone or something years ago. But simply just going to clean it up a little bit. Doesn't really need much, as I mentioned. But might as well do it when we're there. Then we can put the anesthes on. You just need a five millimeter to get that off. So it's not on there tight. So it should come off pretty easily. So the spacer is on the rear. We got the anesthes on, we got the new uh, hub bolt put in. You only need to do that one 12 foot pounds, so it's barely anything, it's just pretty much hand tight. And then uh, you're good to go. So we got the rear installed. It's gonna set a little bit more once we actually roll the car. But man, Fitment is so much better. Just in person, the rear end just looks so much fatter and more aggressive. And that's just the 12 millimeter up front. The 15 is gonna look perfect with this. Even IND said the 12 and 15 combo is the best look if you want like an OEM plus aggressive look. There's a lot of different options you can go with. You can go 15 front and rear, you can go 18 front and rear, which is a little too aggressive in my, in my opinion. It's a little too uh, pokey to me, but I think the 12 is absolutely perfect. And this card lowered just a tad, especially in the rear. Well, especially in the front, I should say, but a little bit in the rear and uh, about two, an inch and a half or so in the front. And this thing is would look amazing. but. Just that 12 millimeter spacer, it is crazy how much better the car looks. Uh, man, really, really like it. So, all right, let me go ahead, get the fronts knocked out, and then uh, we can see what this looks like. Wow, okay, so I got the wheel on the ground, got everything torqued down, and then I just realized each kit comes with four. <laughs> so four of the bolt screws that actually uh, come in one kit, you're supposed to replace both of them, which makes sense. I was thinking four you get for the entire set, both the front and rear, but nope. Got to put this one on, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the rear off. I won't show you the whole process of taking it off and doing all that, but I will show you putting this one on just so it's documented. Uh, but that was just an oversight by me. So I can simply just not put this in the video, but hey, I'm human, I'm normal too, and uh, it happens. So let's go ahead and throw this one on, and then we can go on to the fronts. All right, got the wheel off. I got the other bolt out, so now I'm putting both in. <laughs> that was a stupid thing on my part, but hey, you know. You live and learn, and now I won't happen to the uh, other three. So I'm going to go ahead and torque this down, get the wheel back on, and then uh, I can move on to the front finally.
All right, guys, got the front on, lowered it down, kind of jumped on the sill right here to kind of settle it as much as I could. Obviously, it may go down just a little bit once the car moves, but definitely a big difference overall. I mean, look how much better that fitment is. It's uh, kind of flush with the fenders, and it fills it out way better. Man, this car would just look so much better, a little bit lower, and uh, it would really fill out those fenders even more. But definitely a huge upgrade just with some minor spacers. I mean, look how much better that looks overall. So let me show you the driver's side real quick. It's gonna be a little bit hard to show since there's kind of stuff in the way. Uh, but that is what the fitment looks like on the front and the rear, if you can tell is pretty sunken in sorry it's pretty bad lighting but you get the idea and i did show you before but overall it is just so much better and uh anybody that has a g80 f80 e90 whatever and if you want to stay on stock wheels spacers highly recommend pretty reasonable to get a look that you want without having to go to a brand new set of wheels and get do offsets and all that stuff me personally i love aftermarket wheels and changing things up but if you really want an oem plus look to your car and you don't want to change up the wheels Spacers are definitely the way to go. So let me go ahead and knock out the driver's side. I'll do that off camera since it's exactly the same thing. And then uh, tomorrow morning, tomorrow during the day, I'll show you the exterior shots and just how it looks after it settles and uh, how much better it looks in the daylight. So let me go ahead and knock that out and then uh, we can wrap it up for tonight. All right, guys, install complete. I finished the driver's side. I'll go around and show you that. I mean, it's exactly the same, uh, but a little bit harsher lighting. So you're not gonna be able to really see much but there is the front driver rear driver looks fantastic oh again i'll get you better shots in the daytime uh tomorrow when i take the car out and i'm driving it and it settles a little bit so you guys can get a better picture of uh you know the final look and everything but looks amazing and uh, i'm really really happy with how it turned out i know my buddy is going to be thrilled i was kind of sending him pictures as i was doing it and he was uh, very very happy um, you know, one of the best things about M3s is the really large fenders. And with the spacers, the wheels really fill out the large fenders. And uh, it just looks so much better. I don't know why uh, BMW from the factory didn't make more aggressive offsets to make the wheels look that much better. But all right, I'm going to wrap it up, clean my hands, get everything cleaned up, and I'll catch back up with you guys tomorrow. All right guys, so it is the next morning. So here is a look at the spacers in the daylight. So as you can see, the front is way more aggressive, fills out the fender so much better. The rear is absolutely perfect. I love how that looks. I love how the uh, bottom of the tire is kind of sticking out from the fender there. It looks fantastic at the rear end. Let's uh, get a back shot. It just looks so much more aggressive. Even with just spacers, it's crazy how much more aggressive this whole entire car looks. The front from the this side, looks very very good again this car would look fantastic lowered get rid of that wheel gap and um it really really would just take this car to another level now i've been driving this for the past few days and i'm absolutely loving this car even with the uh, zhf transmission i think it is a fantastic transmission i would prefer manual but unfortunately you can't get the competition package in manual um, so you're kind of stuck with the automatic, but it is very very good a lot of fun I always drive it in M mode with the traction off and everything since that is the most aggressive and uh, The uh, valves open up and everything on the car or in the exhaust and it just sounds so good now Be on the lookout for next week for my car reveal of the new uh, car that is gonna be in the garage the STI replacement I'm headed out this weekend to go pick it up and I'm driving it home and I'm very, very excited to show you guys and get started on that project. It is gonna be a lot of fun and uh, I know you guys are gonna enjoy it. But as for this one, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions at all, be sure to ask them below. In the meantime, keep it clean, keep it simple, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.